our friend stopped by this morning and brought us homemade huckleberry muffins. Thanks friend, you rock. You wanna go up to the ridge first before we take the basket off and see yeah. where the foam is? Yeah. I must not be doing too bad because the thought of putting all the window sills in and start putting Doesn't windows terrify in you. sounds amazing. I'm excited and we should just blare music the whole time and... <laughs> right. Yeah. I think there's a, something oddly satisfying about having all those screws put in. We're getting there. Yeah. You guys, you guys are troopers. Whoever's stuck with the videos the past month. It's way more satisfying doing it than it is watching it and it has to probably be your home to fully appreciate yeah everything that's been done every little screw um so far the membrane looks like it's doing fine yeah everything that i've rolled looks okay so that makes me feel better uh we should see how the stuff that i did yesterday fares in the sun today right see what happens there but yeah i'll go up really quick and just look at the ridge and see where the foam is at overnight and then uh yeah we better get ready for the roofing delivery do you know where you want to put it kind of embarrassing to admit guys but one my butt cheeks hurt and two my inner thighs hurt this must be what it's like to be a cowboy trying to stay on top of this horse I feel like I've been squeezing the roof it's making my thighs burn man now this all is looking really good <clears throat> super happy with that if we had extra foam I'd probably top that off but I'm not too worried about it. I think, like I said, that's about 15 inches thick of foam. Looking good, looking good. Looks great. So it looks like I have about uh, 12 feet, one, two, three, yeah, 12, 13 feet left to fill up. Um, I do wanna focus on getting an air seal here. I'm, I actually feel confident this is sealed, but I, it would feel better if I could just make a nice seal on the edges and fill it in. Uh, this foam looks a lot better than it did before, but I want to be 100% sure. So that's going to feel good to get that foamed in. So we definitely need a little bit more foam from the hardware store. And then we should get this covered. Uh, it looks like we got clouds right now, but if the sun gets on this foam, it'll discolor it. And the UV, I think, does do damage to the foam. It starts to degrade it. So we'll get the plastic sheeting on it. Then we should be waterproof at the ridge anyway. In case anybody is wondering, the underlayment, this ice and water shield, obviously is made for roof material. And the film that's on it is actually quite tacky. Um, so I wouldn't say like anything on a roof, I wouldn't trust it. But I would say that walking on it is, is more comfortable than walking on anything else. If you get the little bit of dust that's on your feet off, most the shoes that I've been wearing seem like they grip really good but i don't know that i would just free walk across it with no brace or support or anything like that i'm not talking about a rope i'm talking about like putting your hands on the ridge or something but on a lower pitch roof probably 612 or 712 i would probably feel comfortable just walking around on this stuff it's it's got pretty good grip as long as you keep your shoes clean I found this little guy last night so we'll throw him in the ridge too and I think we'll have probably used up around 75 to 80 percent of the foam waste that we've generated. Ready? <laughs> Looks super good. Okay. Um, I do want to work hard on the last about 12 feet or so, oh. so we do need to get more foam. Okay. And um, yeah, that'll be a great project for like afternoon, evening. Thirty-five feet to here, so there's room to put it right here. Yeah, why can't it go here? It totally can. So we're thirty-four feet okay. here. Yeah, like the truck would be thirty feet exactly. So if we set it right here, it's pretty out of the way. So it gives us a couple options. Yeah. It's all in how it's packaged, really. What I was hoping is that the truck may be able to like back in 
and I could be like right here. We can just pick it up, truck drives out, and I set it down. There, that's done. Right. I don't have to drive around with yeah, it a whole bunch. Yeah, that'd be sweet. I'm you know? hoping this is a very simple ordeal. We're slowly getting better at receiving materials and not having a complete what disaster. To ask. Yeah, it'll be, yeah. We'll have to just see how it's packaged. That's always the question. We didn't know how the ICFs were packaged. We didn't know how the SIPs were gonna be packaged, so. I wanna say something for people that might be building a house and dealing with materials. We feel that there's, there's different suppliers we can get stuff from. And it's all about finding a person that you feel will help you get what you need. So this, this guy we've been working with has been extremely helpful. I would say if it weren't for him, there's a good chance we wouldn't be receiving this even today. Yep. Because their truck only comes maybe twice a week. So if he weren't fighting for us, I think we wouldn't get this till early next week, which could be yep. four more days at equipment rental. So yep. really thankful to the guy we've been working with. And it's not all about price because sometimes like for example, this company has a forklift. We happen to have one on site, but we purchased some of our products through them because they have a forklift on their truck and we don't have one. So while there are other companies who provide it cheaper, maybe the same product, uh, it's not all about the price of the product, it's about delivery and everything, which mm -hmm. matters. Uh-oh, looks like the garden gate blew open last night. Good thing our veggies look like they're still there. The guy we've been renting the forklift from checked in with us to see when we thought we'd be done with it. No rush, but he said he's been having lots of people asking to rent his forklifts because it's construction season, the economy's up, everyone's hustling, and everyone's just booked out on their equipment. So even if we have a couple of down days in here, like between now and getting the roofing on or between getting the roofing on and getting the windows installed, like we still need a forklift. The longer we rent it, the cheaper the daily rate, so that's good. There's really no other great way to do this stuff, but we feel that we can't let it go because we might not get it back. So we might have this puppy for a while. Jesse, they're here. I might be able to. I don't think they weigh. They're not that heavy, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, it's a 6,000 pound machine. Yeah. There they are, guys. There they are. good enough I'm not really sure like why this is loaded this way because all of this weights out there right I mean, instead of in the middle it would have been nice if it had been there but whatever uh, let's lift it and see what it does that's pretty tippy Way less intimidating than I expected. I know, right? That helps this a little bit. It. That's yeah. it, that's all. Uh, 
How's she looking, bus? Uh, good so far. Wait, rake cleats. I don't see those. I do see the step rakes, and I need to go back and recount those because I only saw 10. Did you open that box over there? Yeah, it was already open, I think. Ridge cap, I counted five. Fascia cover should be 22. I only counted 20, so I need to go recount those. The ridge vents were correct, 36. And double bead mastic butyl tape is 10. Something I did not realize, I was thinking, oh, pop rivets, we'll just get pop rivets in town or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're charcoal covered pop rivets. They're the roofing color. Right. So that's kind of cool. I didn't, I didn't even oh. think about that. Hmm. That's what holds the, uh, the ridge vent on or the ridge cap, I guess. But they're charcoal colored, so they match the roof. Mm -hmm. So they won't be this little line of silver rivets Heck going yeah. across the roof. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, all the screw quantities look good. We ordered way too many because I don't want to run out and they're cheap. Yeah, why and not? In the spectrum of like running out of these, $12 or a day of equipment rental. Exactly. I'll go yep. run out of these, or not run out of these. Yep. So it says that, oh, here we go. What are these? Those are rake cleats, one, two, oh, I see. I do see those now. We're gonna go ahead and look at our roofing brochure. We have a little bit of confusion as to how two parts go together, so, and we might cook some breakfast in there too, so we'll check in with you guys in a little bit. All right, we're back. I don't know how many days later, but we're back. So when we left you guys, we were kind of in a quandary about what we ordered versus what we received. In a nutshell, we received exactly what we ordered, but there was some confusion about how this metal roofing system gets installed. It's probably gonna be easier to show you on the whiteboard than try to explain it all. So let's go there. Guys, we cleaned the garage a couple nights ago, and I know it probably doesn't look that different to you, but it looks way different to us. Makes us feel like our life is in order. We haven't cleaned the garage since, oh, pretty much never. Not a good deep cleaning. It was before the timber brackets was the last uh, time we even remotely cleaned the garage, and that was an ish cleaning. Yeah, we did it's a great little bit of touch-up. First, let me give you just a tiny bit of backstory. When we started looking at roofing, we knew that we wanted a standing seam metal roof. That's just something that we like the aesthetics of, and it provides an option for an installation that is non-typical. It's what's called hidden hardware. And when done to the fullest extent, there's no visible hardware. Why is that important? Well, it's not so much about aesthetics as it is about the durability of the roof. Shelter Institute has a theory and that is the roof has one job and that's to keep you dry. And if you can, don't poke holes in a perfectly good roof. That includes roofing penetrations, skylights, uh, and screws. So a hidden hardware roof uses a crimping type system to fasten the roof to the house versus screws. So we did all this research, we found a local roofing company and we found their metal, standing seam metal roof product. We walked into the retailer ready to buy and we said, here's what we need. And the retailer said, um, they don't do that around here. That's not normal. Uh, that's a, a back east product or a southeast product. And we're like, oh, well, what do people do around here? And more importantly, why? And that kind of led us down a path very different from what we had set out originally to build. On a typical, a very common, like, barn, metal, tin roof, they use a pattern that is called a delta rib or something like that. And it looks kind of like this if you're looking at the panel from the end. And it is most common to fasten this panel through the ribs with screws into whatever is below. That works out really good because as water comes down the ribs and it rains, the water goes into these troughs in the roofing and leaves the roof. And very, very little water is ever exposed to the fastener. Whereas on a standing seam roof, the ribs, 
there's very subtle striations in these flattish areas. We won't talk about why that is necessarily, but the fasteners are actually clear over here on this side of the panel. And the adjoining panel actually overlaps this guy, hiding all those fasteners. So when you look at the panel, there is actually no exposed fasteners. Therefore, there's no way, zero ways, for water to get into the panel. The problem is, that's not how they do it here. So after talking to the retailer, more importantly, the manufacturer in our area, there are a couple of regional concerns for a standing seam hidden fastener roof in our area. One is wind or uplift getting underneath the roof and blowing the roof off. Of course, people in Florida use standing seam roofs with hurricane wind, so that didn't quite jive. The other problem is snow. They are concerned that the hemming or the bending process, which we'll talk about in a second, is potentially vulnerable to freeze thaw expandability. Long story short, we stuck with standing seam, but we let them kind of steer us toward a more typical installation method in our region, and that is to put screws through the face of this panel at the eave. Probably, I'm guessing, a couple of screws per rib, something like this. And I don't like that idea because the thought of putting a hole in a perfectly good roof just doesn't set well with me. My main concern is actually snow. Because we have such a steep roof, it will slide. That we know, especially with a metal roof. And if we have screws right at the eave, my concern was that if the snow were to slide aggressively, there's a chance that these fasteners could be damaged or ripped out. Have I seen that? Nah, I've never personally witnessed it, but it, it only makes sense, I guess, if you just use common sense. The retailer manufacturer said, we've never seen that, it doesn't happen, it's not common. I said, okay, fine, we'll move forward. That brings me to the second thing that they directed us to do. When you install a hidden hardware roof at the rake, there are many different ways to do it, but the most common way is to uh, bend the roofing up at the edge of the roof, and then to install a cleat which is fastened through the side of the roof. So our roofing panel is here, goes something like this, and a cleat is installed that actually clamps the edge of the roofing down like this. It looks like a big metal hook. And you fasten this guy through the edge of the, of the roof. It's called a rake. And that clamps the roof down. And then all you have to do is keep this part dry. So another piece of metal is installed over the top of that. And it comes down with a small hem that forces water away from the roof. So you have the roofing, this cleat, and the flashing. They were concerned that if snow were to get in here and freeze thaw, it might fatigue over time this piece of metal, making the roof vulnerable to uplift, and now the roof flies off. Which brings us full circle to how do they do it here? The answer is they use a piece of metal called a step brake, which is screwed, yes, screwed through the roof again to fasten this down. And the concern I have is that, again, with our standing seam metal roof, all of the water will spend its life in these small flat areas between the ribs. And we'll have a row of fasteners going up the edge of the roof. Is that going to make the roof leak? Probably not. But it's just more screws through a perfectly good roof. And again, you have to understand that we came to this whole project with the vision of a hidden hardware standing seam metal roof. So when we went to the retailer, we started getting a bunch of mixed information and suddenly we're kind of on our heels trying to figure out, is this what we want? Does that work? Does this make sense? Are they telling the truth? Is this viable? In the end, we agreed that we would go with this method. What I didn't understand until the metal hit the ground on Friday was I thought the fasteners for this 
step rake, which covers the edge of the roof and, tr and funnels water onto the ribs, is that the fasteners would go through the side of the roof, which didn't bother me as much because the amount of moisture present on the side of a metal roof is very, very little. Whereas a fastener through the, the pan of the standing seam, I don't like the idea of that. Doesn't mean it's wrong, it just doesn't sit well with me. So when we pulled it out, we took a few minutes, we sat down with the detail brochures from the manufacturer and looked at the difference in their detail between a standing seam, hidden hardware roof, and one with exposed fasteners. And the retailer and manufacturer did not do anything wrong. They sent us everything exactly the way we asked it to be sent. Only I misunderstood how exactly this is going to be installed. Because we're brand new home builders, we've never done this before. I do have a little bit of experience with Delta Rib tin roofing and none with standing seam. We wanted to take the weekend to talk about what do we really want? We get one chance to build this roof and it turns out that we have to wait to order the product or we would have to wait to order the product to do this installation the way we originally wanted to do it. So that gave us a couple of days. We took some time and we talked to Shelter, kind of went through why direct fastening versus hidden hardware, where the manufacturers are coming from, what the history of these roofing methods are and how viable they are. In a nutshell, a lot of the hidden hardware roofing is somewhat new relative to direct fasten. So the manufacturers are somewhat hesitant to provide an equivalent warranty, whereas they will stand behind a direct fastened roof because they trust it. They've been building them that way for a long time. They work, they don't leak, they don't fly off. They don't have a lot of these problems. So after the roofing arrived, we ran back to the retailer and said, can we even do a hidden hardware roof? Will you sell us the products to do this roof? And the manufacturer said, in our region, we will not warranty the roof if you put a, a hidden fastener rake cleat on. They're, they're legitimately worried about the longevity of this design. What they will provide is this same fastening system along the eave. So at the eave, what we were originally planning to do was to have the roof come down just past the edge of the roof and we would put screws just in the end and that's what would hold the end of the roofing on. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, over here there are screws along the side of the panel. So that's what holds the entire panel at its length. But right at the end where wind could come up underneath the panel, a single row of screws would be present. However, they do offer a method of attaching the roof at the eave that allows the panel to come down and you can hem the panel around a cleat that is fastened to the roof like this. So we would simply cut the ribs off and bend the metal around here and then clamp it nice and tight. And that brings us to where we are now. The company said, we will warranty this fastening method at the eave. We believe it will be durable. The reason we like this method is that if the snow were to slide or rain or whatever, there's nothing to impede it. It's going to come off the roof. It so happens on the way to the retailer, we saw a church that has this exact roofing detail. And Alyssa and I got to stand there and study it and it looks fantastic. It looks durable. So we had to order this product which is called an offset cleat. We did not get that with our original roofing order, but otherwise nothing from our roofing order needs to change. So we're currently in a holding pattern waiting for this product to arrive sometime in the next couple of days. After discussing this scenario with Shelter, we have decided to stick with the step rake flashing that was provided to us and we will be putting screws up through the roof, but we'll be using a product that will seal off water beneath that piece of flashing. That's not gonna change. So now we're just waiting on one other conundrum. So we installed ice and water shield and the ice and water shield has been sitting on the roof exposed for approximately a week. But during that week, the 
membrane has developed a characteristic that mm, makes us wonder about the integrity of the waterproofing. This rippling that is happening in the membrane has us a little bit concerned. We've been in contact with the manufacturer representative. They're doing some research on the batch that we purchased to find out if there's any known issues with it or maybe it's just old inventory. What we do know is that the rippling is only on the west side of the roof and that side of the roof gets absolutely scorched with sun and that's all we've had since we started the entire roofing project is brutal sun. So we're currently waiting for them to get back to us just to find out if there's actually a legitimate issue that we need to deal with, i.e. remove the product and replace it. We're hoping that we don't have to do that because as you can imagine, that would be a nightmare. And the areas that are impacted seem to be very isolated. We did follow some of their directions which were to roll the areas. And when we did that, they did adhere but it seems like when the sun just bakes the roof, those areas soften, the adhesive does, and it still wants to pucker up. So we have two concerns there. One is waterproof ability and whether the roofing as it lays on that membrane will be affected. And that's the grand synopsis of where we are now. Yeah, we're just kind of waiting, you know, waiting on the manufacturer, um, kind of deciding what plan of action we want to take and in the meantime, because we're waiting for the part anyways, we can't really start installing the roofing. Right. We think we're going to transition to something we can work on since we have this forklift on site, which is windows. It's probably worth addressing. Are we panicking because of this issue? Does this have any relevance to our decision to install the product vertically? The answer is no, we're not panicking. It is frustrating because it's a product we're not familiar with, but guess what? Practically none of the products we use are we familiar with. And it's behaving in a way that seems atypical compared with like the polyguard, which we put on the foundation, mm -hmm. but that's because it's on a roof. And so we're just trying to be patient. We do want to give the manufacturer time to get back to us. We want time to make decisions. If we just rush, 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 it's highly likely we'll make a decision that we regret. We're trying not to be in a rush, but I think the hardest part of it all is just, it's the mental battle. Like we had no idea what a project just getting a roof on the house was. It's many, many, many weeks with lots of unforeseen problems. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a push to keep going mentally. Like the thought of having to redo anything makes us sick to our stomach. But the thought of not knowing if it's good enough, that doesn't make us feel good either. So it's just a lot of stress, but hopefully over the next few days, we'll kind of work through it and we'll come to a reasonable plan of action. Yep. And happily, we have a lot of kind of projects in motion. There's no real downtime on the house. so And we'll, we have no rain in the forecast. It's hot, so we're yep. not really in a rush. It will be, we'll have something figured out before the rains come again and fall. Yep. Um, so that kind of goes back to like, there's no rush. Like it's just, it's a head game for sure. Something that we've discussed over the last few days, kind of going through day-to-day -day life, catching up on things, running errands. And since we're switching gears, we're spending a lot of time getting materials because we weren't planning on working on windows. We, we don't really have the stuff on site. So that's kind of what we've been doing. But in the meantime, we've been talking. And what is hard about this house for us is that we want to build a good home, whatever that means, but it's so subjective. We've never been in a house that doesn't have problems but that's not licensed to have a don't care attitude. And because we're first time builders, that's not an excuse to just be like, well, we didn't know. We're trying, trying to be patient. And if you guys have been following us for any length of time, you know that we have run into problems like this from every the time stage of the build. we broke ground, uh, every phase. And a lot of it is just the fact that there's all these products and we're not familiar with them and we try to get advice um, a lot of times we actually try to get local advice because the products that we're using shelter has not used and the stuff that shelter uses is often not available for us to acquire stuff like that so the exercise of patience i think would try anyone and it is very difficult to sit here and look at this roof and wonder what will happen the good news is our house is currently waterproof mm -hmm. we know that yes the, re the we ridge. We finished that off camera, but the ridge is foamed and uh, yes. it is turped. So yep. bring it on, Rain. We are so ready for you. Yeah, the ridge is dry. 
it's it turned out great i feel really good i think in the end i actually feel good about the ridge which at first felt rocky why because we're using a product we've never used before there's a pattern here the windows are, are probably going to have their own problems yep. you'll have to stay tuned to find out what, what the they heck are. they were <laughs> until then i think we'll just sit around and eat some blueberries that we got and try to figure out how to get these up there.